Let's see if this thing uh, gets going. Great. 1943, the height of World War II, the American Air Force fighting in Europe suddenly found themselves with a very serious problem. This thing called the Messerschmitt 262 was the first operational jet fighter. The Germans had got this new technology first. What did the Americans do? They turned to Lockheed Corporation an American aircraft manufacturer. What did Lockheed do? They took a small group of their most eccentric, unmanageable genius engineers and put them outside the company. I mean literally outside the company, in a very smelly circus tent. They took them outside of all the administrative procedures that were normal in that company and told them, sit in your smelly circus tent, which they called the Skunk Works, and build us an airplane. 143 days later, the US had its first jet fighter. From concept to flying prototype in 143 days. The Skunk Works has since gone on to produce some of the most groundbreaking, <coughs> iconic aircraft of the last century by working in this very particular way outside of the normal administrative procedures of their parent company. In Africa today, we have a crisis. We're losing our large mammals extremely fast, and I'm not talking about rhinos and elephants. I'm talking other large mammals, which are also keystones to our conservation efforts and to our wildlife tourism industry, like the West African wild dog, which used to occur across 3,000 kilometers of West Africa and is now down to one population of less than 50 animals in one place. It has no conservation attention, none whatsoever. Or the Tora hartebeest, which used to range in their thousands across Ethiopia, Sudan, and Eritrea. No Western scientist has seen one for 20 years. They may be extinct. Does anyone care? I don't know, because I can't find any information about them. And there are literally dozens of other animals in the same predicament. Animals that you may have never heard of that are on the edge of extinction with no or very little conservation attention. This is actually unbelievable. And I've realized by looking at this problem that existing big conservation organizations, and I've left a big space there for you to imagine some famous logos, are not designed and operated to save these risky species, these species on the end. The existing big conservation orgs are all about looking after themselves. They're all about brand management. They do not like risky things that could fail along the way, and they definitely do not like to look deep into the future of Africa, an unpredictable future Africa. What I'm saying is conservation needs a skunk works. It needs that smelly circus tent of geniuses working on their own. We need to get very good at search and rescue of endangered species. We need to get very good at conservation psychology, open sourcing conservation in ways that we've never done before. We need to get very good at working in fragmented new ecosystems where these other organizations fear to tread. So how do we do this conservation works thing? Well, I don't really know, but I want to try, and I'd like you guys to join me tomorrow morning in discussing the next steps, because there is an unbelievable opportunity here. We need to find the disappeared, save the doomed, <laughs> prepare for the unknown, and make a hell of a lot more friends for conservation than we currently have in Africa. So please run away, join me, and come and join the circus. Thank you very much.